All right, so exponential functions 4.2. Um, the first thing I would have you do is on page 348. So open up your books to 348. I'd show you my book, but it's got all the answers. And that wouldn't be any fun. You're such a cheater. So page, yes please, yeah. See if I can do this here. So now I gotta figure out how to make this up right. Do you think it's the other way? Or is that right? This is all, I'm just so glad I'm recording this. All right, try these problems. Pause. All right, so I didn't probably didn't have allow you enough time, but I don't know how valuable this is anyways. Uh, so a lot of these things, a lot of the problems that we have in math, you'll see it in calculus. The, the biggest problem is like algebra or laws of exponents and simplifying things. And these are just a few examples of um, you need to know the laws of exponents. What do we do with negatives? What do we do with the fractions? Things like that. So two cubed, hopefully we know is eight. So far, so good. Three to the negative four, that's the same as one over three to the fourth, because it's a negative exponent. And three to the fourth, I think that's 81, so it's one over 81. Uh, two squared we know is four, plus two to the negative two, that's the same as one over two to the second. So it is, 4 plus 1 fourth over 2. And here I would multiply the top and bottom by the common denominator. This is like a complex fraction, so 4 over 4. So I get 16 plus 1 on top over 8 on the bottom. 4 times 4 is 16, 4 times 1 fourth is 1, and 8 on the bottom, so we get 17 eighths. Anybody get that? Okay. Was it like 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4 repeating? Um, 17 eighths would be 2 or something. <clears throat> 3 squared is 9 minus 1 ninth over 2, so same thing. What would we multiply the top and bottom by here? Nine, very good. So nine over nine, so I get 81 minus one over 18, or 80 over 18, 40 over nine. <clears throat> Which is four in four, 4.4444. 4, 4, 4. So that's what you had, you just different problem me three. Two to the, or 10 to the X, so we need to figure out what 10 to the negative 1 is. What is 10 to the negative 1? 1 over 10 to the 1, which is 0 0.1 or 1 tenth, right? What's 10 to the 0? 1. Anything to the 0 is 1. 10 to the first, uh, that's a hard one. 10 to the second, another kind of dumb one. <coughs> uh, 1 half to the negative 1. 2. Okay, so if it's a negative fraction, negative exponent for a fraction, you can flip it and make it positive. So it becomes 2 over 1 to the first, which somebody said is just 2. 1 half to the 0 is just 1. 1 half to the 1 is 1. 1 half to the second is 1 fourth. All right. Okay, so that's just kind of background skills that might be helpful in this section. Uh, it talks about exponential functions. You've probably, well, you've had this a little bit in math. We're gonna dive deeper probably than you ever have. There it is, all right. So 
let's graph y equals 3 to the x. Well, if you want to follow along, here's how we do it. y equals 3 to the x. So I'm graphing y equals 3 to the x. That is an exponential equation. Does it look like it's exponential growth or exponential decay? Growth. It is growth. Anybody know how I knew it was growth based on what's positive? The exponent. That's not necessarily true. Okay, the other thing then. They were both positive. So if they're both positive, yeah. well, how about y equals 1 half to the x? Because it's a whole number. So 0. 0.5, I'll do 1 half. I better put in parentheses. 1 half to the x. So they're both positive. Okay, you said whole numbers, right? Is that right? So I'm comparing y equals 3 to the x. Fraction that it's going to be exponential decay. That's really close to the correct okay. answer because what if it was like five over two? That's still a fraction, right? Okay. If it's less than one. Very good. So if our base here is greater than one, you're multiplying by that number every time. It's going to get bigger if you're multiplying by three. Three times three times three times three. It's gonna increase, it's going to grow, exponential growth. If you're multiplying by half every time, you're taking half of what you had, half, 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 and it's going to get smaller and smaller, and it's going to eventually go to zero. It's going to have a horizontal asymptote of zero. So what about y equals 3 to the x? Can you tell what its horizontal asymptote is? It's like, kind of. As it goes to the left, well, I'll leave them both on there. So it's the blue one here. What's the horizontal asymptote? It's like, it's like in the Three. middle. Wait, the horizontal? The horizontal. Zero? Y equals zero. Everybody see that it goes to the x-axis as it goes to the left. It has a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. Okay, what about the one-half to the x? What's its horizontal asymptote? Zero. It is also zero. So whether it's growth or decay, the horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals zero. Unless you have like plus two afterwards. What do you suppose the plus 2 is going to do? Move it where? Up 2. Up 2. What do you think the horizontal asymptote is going to be here? 2. Y equals 2. So let's confirm that. And I'm going to get rid of this one. You can see that it has a horizontal asymptote of y equals 2. Okay? So the plus 2 doesn't move it. It moves it up to. So what if we had y equals 2 x plus actually I'll just look at y equals 2 to the x. If I was going to make a sketch, here's my locator point. If there's no movement, my locator point is at 0, 0. This does not have any movement. It will go like this one. If you plug 0 in for x, what do you get for y? 1, because it's 2 to the 0. What if it was 3 to the 0? It'd be 1. It'd still be 1. Okay, so our general formula, like y equals 2 to the x, y equals 3 to the x, y equals 1 half to the x, its locators here, its y-intercept is going to be 0, 1. Always. And this one is going to be, is it growth or decay? It's growth. So here's what my sketch would look like. And I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Okay, so that's just kind of a general one, or kind of a parent one. Parent means like the easiest one you can come up with. Yeah, Melina. Um, for it to be positive, does it have to be greater than 1 or greater or equal to 1? Um, if it's 1, if we graph y equals 1 to the x, any thoughts on what, would that be growth or decay? That's a really good question. It would just go straight, wouldn't it? Very good, because you're multiplying by 1 every time. Mm -hmm. And you're not going anywhere, right? 
y equals 1 to the x is just going to be like a, a horizontal line. Okay, so it's neither growth or decay if it's 1. So it does have to be greater than 1 for growth and less than 1. Yeah. Yeah, Cadence. What happens when it's So if you have a negative base, well, let's try it. Any guesses? I like where you're going with that. So negative 2 to the x. Just makes everything negative, so it does flip it across the x-axis. Very good. And that's, is this growth or decay here? It's actually growth. It's just a negative exponential growth. Yeah. All right. So here's what you'll have to do. I'll ask you to graph y equals 3 to the x plus 2 minus 4. And you're going to have to make a sketch of that. Okay, You can use your calculators if you want to, but you really don't need to. I will also ask you what the domain is, what the range is, what the x or the horizontal asymptotes. They're never going to have a vertical asymptote, by the way. Exponentials. Okay, So let's start with our locator point. What does this plus 2 do to my graph? Left two, very good, Colton. Okay, so it's left two, and then what about the minus four? Down four. So my locator point is negative two, comma, negative four. So if I was going to make a sketch of this, we're going to go left two, down four, and I'm going to put a dot. Make it obvious that you made a dot. Oh, that's not really aligned very well. Make it a bigger dot. So Wait for it. There it is. Okay, now it's landed on it. It's a really aggressive dot. Okay, so this is growth. I've got a locator at negative 2, negative 4. I'm going to draw my horizontal asymptote. My horizontal asymptote is y equals negative 4. And the one point I know it goes through is one up from it, right there. What about my y intercept. Think about that. Everybody, try to find the y-intercept of this one in your head. You shouldn't need a calculator. The y-intercept. Let's see. Ethan, what do you got? Four. Close. Wait. Well, Five. No? so if you put zero in for x, that gives you, so 3 to the second, which is 9, and then 9 minus 4 is 5, so five. you sure did. So there's my y-intercept. Those are the two points I'd be looking to make sure that it goes through, and then it flattens out like that. There's my sketch. My horizontal asymptote is y equals negative 4. The domain, we like this, the domain for all exponentials is what? Every single exponential. All real, all, real numbers. all real numbers. There's no square roots. You're not going to divide by zero. You can see it goes forever to the left, forever to the right. Domain, kind of like parabolas, is all real numbers. The range here. Greater than or equal to. Is there like a point where it won't go beyond? Yes. And what is that? Negative four. Negative four. Does it ever reach negative four? No. No, very good. So your range would be y is greater than negative 4. Interval notation, you'd say, from negative 4 to infinity. That's your range. Okay, so that's why it's important to find your horizontal asymptote. That's like the either the minimum or the maximum. It'll tell you, it'll help you in finding the range. Why is the, the one dot not at negative 4? Yeah. This this dot? Yeah. Negative two, negative four. It should be one, two, three. Four. Yeah, it's at negative two, negative four. No, the one above that. Yeah, oh, so if you look at just our regular one, that's confusing. That's a good question. Y equals two. The x actually does not even go through our locator point. Mm -hmm. So whatever your locator point is on the asymptote, it's not on the curve. You go up one from that. I think everything, every, all problems this year, I think we're just going to go up one from it or down one if it's a negative.
Okay, that's a really good point. So your locator point, the graph will not go through it, the asymptote, the horizontal asymptote will go through it. All right, so just for the sake of time, we've got another one here in our notes. This is exponential decay. You can see that the x plus two is gonna go left two, the minus three is down three. We put our dot at negative two, negative three, that's right here. The graph does not go through it, but the horizontal asymptote which is y equals negative 3, does go through it, and it's decay because it's between 0 and 1. What's the domain of this one? All real numbers. All real numbers. What's the range of this one? Y is greater than negative 3. Very good. Okay. I'm just going to do this last problem just because you freak out on story problems. There's so many really good applications, exponential functions. This will, there's a lot of things in the world that have exponential models, behave exponentially. Here's an example, a bowl of soup. Just hang on for a couple minutes here. I'm just going to read through this. Bowl of soup is removed uh, from the stove at 200 degrees, placed in a room temp which is 72 degrees. This is the equation that represents the temperature of the bowl of soup, okay? T is the temperature, little t is the time. So the question is, find the temperature of the soup after 30 minutes. What do we do with that? Plug it in for little t, right? And then you can just use your calculator. Do you know what this E means? No. Exponential? Yeah, it, that's... It is exponential. E is actually times ten to the. Hang on. Stop. Okay. E is on your calculator. There's a button. It is the base. It's actually, I think it's named after Euler, one of the most famous mathematicians. So E is right here. There's an E to the X button. Or it's so important. It's on here again, right here. It's just little e right there. Okay, if you want to figure out what e is, it's just that number right there. Type in e and it's 2.7, kind of like pi. Pi is 3.14, e is 2.718, and so on. All right, so I guess that's as far as we got. Um, get, a, get a good start on your homework. I think this is the only day we're spending on 4-2. Yeah, we're going to start 4-3 Monday, but I'll have some questions, I'm sure, on 4-2.